Hey everyone, what's up? We're uh, back in LA. Gonna be playing some more No Limit Hold'em. Probably gonna try to do some more 5-5. Five five. Uh, see if we can get out of this little hole we got into in May. I played in San Diego uh, earlier this week and had some pretty good luck, so couldn't record it unfortunately because the tables were too small, but back back in LA, tables are a little bit bigger, so we'll see what we can do. See how it goes. All right, we sit down, we get comfortable, and we pick up 9-8 suited in our second hand of the day. I'm in the small blind right now with about $500 behind me. This hand has way too much excitement in it for just my second hand of the session. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it, it's pretty cool. The cutoff raises to 25 and the button calls. I call shortly after and the big blind folds. And now we're just waiting for under the gun plus one to make a decision on if they want to play or not. And I'm not expecting him to make a call here. I'm honestly expecting him to either fold or raise and maybe try to get one of us out of the pot. But um, that's not what ends up happening. He ends up actually just folding it, which is probably a good play by him because he is out of position. No need to risk that there. And now we're going to the flop. The flop comes out 627 rainbow and I start off with a check. The pot's at about $85 right now, so we're playing for a lot. And shortly after I check, the cutoff checks and the button wastes no time getting in a bet of $60. All right, so my thought process here is we have a open-ended straight draw, we have a backdoor flush draw, and we have a backdoor straight flush draw. So I'm thinking we have enough equity in this position right now to make the call for $60. And in this position, I honestly think I have one of the stronger hands with the preflop action, so I do end up making the call. The player to my right on the button is a pretty loose aggressive player. I've played with him a few times before, and it does concern me because he could definitely have a pair or even two pair in this position, and I would not be surprised. But I already made the call, so we have to just live with our decision. The cutoff looks pretty upset, uh, seems like he missed his flop, and he throws the fold in. The turn is coming out and it's a 5 of diamonds. We hit our straight and I check to induce a bluff. I know this guy's an aggressive player, I'm expecting him to bet or jam here, which he does for $295 effectively, and I snap call. I got a little excited with that call, I probably could have digested the situation a bit more before making it, but uh, it pays off, the jack of hearts comes out and my opponent is shocked that I had the straight, he told me uh, he does not think the 5 of diamonds improved me there, and he said that he had a 2 pair. And just like that, in only our second hand of the day, we pick up a very large pot, which makes me feel good, and I have a lot of cushion going into the rest of the session. On the very next hand, on the button, we pick up King-10 offsuit. I now have about $915 behind. I'm one of the larger stacks at the table, and I'm feeling very confident right now. It folds over to me, and since I'm on the button, I am going to open raise here to $10. I am in position here, so I definitely could have raised it to $15. Uh, curious what you guys think about that sizing, but the small blind fold and the big blind uh, calls for five more dollars to make it 10. We are now heads up to the flop, which comes out 947 rainbow. The pot is now $25, big blind checks, I check, and we're off to the turn, which is a 10 of hearts. We now have top pair and a very solid kicker, so I'm feeling good about this hand. The big blind bets $25 into me, and I make that call fairly quickly. So we are now off to the river, which comes out a jack of hearts. I am in a bit of a weird position here. I was hoping to see nothing above a 10 in this spot. My opponent can definitely have a jack, but he checks to me, so that does show a bit of weakness. I think it's definitely viable here to this check and go to showdown with the jack out. He could be trapping me, but I feel like typically an opponent would like to value bet me here. So I go ahead and make the bet for $35. I see my opponent going for calling chips here. I still think we have the best hand, so I'm feeling good. He puts in the call for $35. I show my pair of 10s, and he shows a jack nine two pair. Uh, we had him up to the river, really unfortunate. I guess he did check just to trap me. I, I feel like he should have raised me there. I'm not sure what he thought I had, maybe a straight, but who knows. Not too much longer, we pick up king-queen offsuit in the hijack position. We have about $950 behind. I open raise to $15 and the button calls. We're just waiting for the small blind to make a decision at this point. He does typically take a while to make decisions and he is a tight player, so not expecting him to be playing a lot of hands tonight. And after a few seconds, he decides, I don't want to play this hand, I'm going to fold it and the big blind calls the $15. We are now off to the flop. The flop comes out queen king four with two clubs. We hit two pair, feeling pretty good. I definitely want to start betting on these streets here. The big blind checks, so I go ahead and make a bet for $20. 
I'm a little worried about the two clubs that are out. I have some like phobia of flushes for some reason. Uh, but anyways, the button calls the $20 and the big blind folds. We're now off to the turn, which is a seven of diamonds, which is effectively a blank. I don't think this is really helping either of our ranges here. Um, I'm confident we have the best hand. I don't really want him to chase the flush, but also I kind of do because it's not likely he'll get it. And we have a lot of value at two pair here. I try to think of an appropriate bet here for the pot sizing and I end up going with $60 while knocking over my card protector. I think with his range it is likely that he might have a pair of kings or queens and it's enticing enough for him to make the call. Uh, unfortunately I do think I bet a little too high for that and he folds. But I'm not going to complain, we took down a pretty nice pot, I think next time I will bet a little bit lower and try to get some more value. Not too long after that, we pick up Queen-10 offsuit and under the gun plus one. I raised to $10 initially and middle position, small blind and big blind call the $10. We are now four players to the flop, which comes out five queen eight with two spades. We make top pair. This is a pretty good spot for us here. The big blind bets $10. I call the middle position calls and the small blind folds. So we are now three players heading to the turn, which comes out the nine of hearts. The big blind checks to me and I'm a little worried about hands like 10 jack right now because they just made a straight, so I make the cowardly check and the middle position checks as well. We are now on the river and it is a 3 of hearts. I don't think any of these players improve with the 3 in their range, so the big blind checks over to me. I think they're weak with no straight at this point because they didn't bet the turn, so I go ahead and make a bet of $20. I see the middle position reaching for calling chips. Not too worried, I think we have this one down. He makes the call, big blind folds, and I show my top pair. And it looks like pair of queens is actually good. The middle position mucks his hand, and we win a nice pot again. The cards have been super generous to me today. I've been very lucky, and I've been having some solid runouts as well. Next up, we pick up queen 10 offsuit in the big blind position. We have $1,040. The button raises to $15. I call, under the gun calls as well. And we are now off to the flop with three players. It comes out eight, queen eight. We make top pair, but there is a pair of eights on the board, so I am a little worried that someone has trips, but I go ahead and make the bet of $15 to test the waters out. Under the gun folds, and now the button calls. So we're off to the turn now, just me and the button, and it comes out a nine of hearts. Uh, I don't think this really improves either one of us. I do still have top pair. The two eights scare me a lot for some reason, so I check here, and he sees that as weakness and takes advantage of it. He bets $25. After watching this hand back a few times, I realize that I'm putting way too much respect on my opponent and this board here. I don't think he has a uh, eight often in his range here, and I think I'm playing a little bit too scared. I probably should have raised in this position, especially with top pair, um, but you know what? I just go ahead and make the call, and uh, we go to the river. And the river comes out a eight of hearts, so I am very confident now that my opponent is uh, highly unlikely to have an eight, considering that three of them are on the board. Um, so that relieves a lot of stress for me. I am now confident that I have the best hand. Sure, he could have quads in this position, but it's very unlikely given his range and also the uh, chances of that happening. So I go ahead and make a bet for $50, a little bit less than uh, half the pot there. And he goes for calling chips, which makes me feel good because if he had an eight, he definitely would shove here. So I know I haven't beat. He says, hey, you have the queen, man. I said, yeah, I have the queen. And uh, he shows ace nine. Uh, we take down a pretty big pot there. This is now becoming one of my better sessions, so we're feeling really good about that. Shortly after, we pick up Jack-10 suited in the low jack with about $1,200 behind. Uh, middle position just puts in the rest of his chips here. We just played and he had about $50 left, so I said, hey, you know what? I'll give you some action. We have Jack-10 suited, why not? Uh, I'll make the call. And I really don't think Jack-10 suited is too bad of a position here anyway, so I don't think the call is totally uh, punting, but it might be a little bit um, of a grief because there could definitely be like kings or aces in his hand, so we'll have to see what happens. But I'm also considering he's probably on tilt after that last hand, so let's just send it. Uh, two, king, ten, five, jack comes out and he shows his pocket aces which get cracked by my two pair, jack, ten. Uh, super unfortunate, that guy was really cool, I, I feel bad he just was running bad today and you know, that happened, so. Uh, really cool guy, but just just an unlucky day. 
So at this point, a lot of time goes by and we were drawing dead. For some reason, I decided, hey, you know what? King five offsuit is when we're gonna play. Under the gun limps, middle position raises, and I call the $15 raise. Under the gun calls it as well. Everyone else folded, so we're off to the flop, which comes out seven, 10, queen. And we hit absolutely nothing while well, I'm expecting my opponents to improve, but I guess they don't. So I make the check, under the gun checks, and middle position checks. So we get a free card here on the turn, which is a king. Uh, pretty cool for me. So I bet $20, and the uh, under the gun position does make the call for 20 I'm a bit concerned about this call because he definitely has a king in his range, and if he has a king right now, I'm sure he has a better kicker than I do. Uh, the five is not too strong in this position. The middle position folds, and now we are off to the river. And that comes out a jack of hearts, which is really bad for us because that means an ace now makes a straight, and we have no chance of winning. So I make the conservative check, he checks right back, and I show my king. He shows his queen jack, he rivered a two pair. Uh, pretty unlucky for me, I'm surprised he didn't raise me there, I think he was also scared of a straight, so pretty fair play, but uh, on to the next hand. A uh, significant amount of time passes, and we finally pick up an interesting hand, we pick up pocket threes, under the gun raises to $20 here. Small blind decides, I want to play this, but I put in the wrong amount, so let me reach back and get the right amount. So he puts in the 20 bucks, and I call the 20, we are now three players headed to the flop. And the flop comes out two jack four with two clubs the small blind checks over to me and for some reason i make a c bet here of 25 dollars i have a very weak hand especially with a jack and a four on the board with two clubs not sure why i made that bet i guess i wanted to get some folds early but under the gun calls 25 dollars and the small blind folds the pot is getting quite large now and the two of clubs comes out i lose to a lot on the board at this point I think the worst idea would be to bet, and I do that for some reason. So I bet $30. I don't know if I'm tired or I'm just tilted a bit from losing some of my uh, gains, but under the gun calls that, and we are now off to the river, which is a seven of hearts. I uh, completely miss. I don't have anything except like the second worst pair. I check, and this guy makes the right decision and bets pretty large here. Um, looks like a value bet to me. I, I do think he has maybe a flush or a jack at least, and uh, I think a lot about this decision. Not sure why. I, I, I truly don't know what I'm thinking about here. I don't beat anything except... I really don't beat anything. Um, I don't know if I'm like thinking to bluff here. Eventually I just make the fold. I, I feel like I kind of just wasted everyone's time there, um, but that was a very bad hand for me. Alright, next up we pick up Queen Jack suited in the cutoff. We have about $950. Low Jack open raises to $15. I call, the button calls, and the big blind calls. We're four players and we're off to the flop, which is a five Jack four rainbow. The pot's at about $65 at this point. Big blind checks it. I'm thinking of betting when it gets to my turn. The low Jack checks over to me and I make a, a $35 bet. The button reaches for his chips and he makes the call for $35. The big blind folds right after that happens. I see the low jack reaching over for calling chips at this point and uh, still feel like we have the best hand in this position. There definitely could be a king jack or something like that that has us beat, but uh, I'm feeling good. So he makes the call and now we're off three players for the turn, which is a jack of clubs. We just made trips. I'm positive we have the best hand. Low Jack checks it over very quickly to us. I make a bet for $60 at this point, which I thought was an appropriate bet given the pot size and the two clubs that are out. I thought maybe if these guys have two clubs, they might want to chase that for $60 into a $170 pot, but uh, turns out the button is not interested in that. At this point, I'm a little bit mad at myself in my head thinking I should have bet a bit less. If my opponents have a ace or a king, maybe even a queen, they might have been inclined to go for a river here if the bet was small enough given the pot size, but uh, I didn't allow that to happen. Unfortunately, both opponents end up folding. I take down a pretty nice pot, so not complaining, but I think I lost a lot of value on that hand with how I played it. The button finally makes its way over to me and I look down at pocket nines. We have about $1,060 behind here. The hijack raises to $15 and I make the call. I am probably in a decent position here to make a raise considering I'm on the button and I have nines, but I think a call is appropriate as well. The small blind calls the $15 and now we're three players headed to the flop. 
and it comes out ace two eight monotone with about $65 in the pot, the small blind checks and the hijack bets $25. I'm tired, I just wanna go home, and I do think someone's gonna get a flush this hand. I don't think nines have much value here, so I go ahead and lay the cards down and make the fold. Hey everyone, uh, wrapping up my session over in LA today. We made about $525 in profit, so super happy with how I played today. Um, we're now in the green as of, uh, I think it's like the seventh or eighth of May today, so we were down a bit starting May, but now we're in the green, so feeling pretty good about that. Uh, got out of that hole there. Met um, a lot of cool people at the table today. Shout out Michael. He was to the right of me. He was a really good player and I learned a lot from him. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, pretty happy with how we played overall. I don't know where my car is, which usually happens. I lose my car and then the sun's too bright and I'm... Yeah, all right, I'm gonna go home. Thanks guys.